Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Sarah Meadows and today we're looking at gizmos from Simon. Gizmos, designed by Phil Walker Harding, is a two to four player engine building game. Let's take a look at it now. In the game, players are building gizmos for the upcoming science fair. Players get one action on their turn, which includes file, pick, build, or research. The filing action is saving a card to build for later. When players take the pick action, they choose an energy marble from the front of the dispenser and place it in their supply ring. Everyone starts with a hand limit of five in their supply, a file limit of one, and a research of three. They take three cards from any deck and choose one gizmo to either file or build. During the build action, players pay the cost of the gizmo, and that gizmo now goes in the corresponding slot under their board. Once a gizmo has been built, the action on the card can be triggered. So when I take the file action, I can take an energy blindly from inside the dispenser and I can also take a pick action. Since I chose to pick a red energy, I can take another energy from the dispenser. Converters can be used during the build action, which can manipulate the type of energy into a wild or multiply it to purchase more powerful gizmos. Each card can be used once per turn, and the player to have built the 16th gizmo or built the fourth level three gizmo triggers the end of the game, the round finishes, and the player with the most victory points wins. So Gizmos is a pure energy builder game um, with a great theme attached to it. I enjoyed the science fair theme, and I think they did a really good job of pairing the artwork, which was very fun, um, with this engine builder. Uh, the iconography on the cards is very good. Um, I've played this several times and demoed it, and um, I rarely had to explain, except for the first initial explanation right thing, uh, what a lot of the icons meant. Uh, this is one that involves little reading, um, so there's only the four actions, so even younger kids who can't read can play this one. And interesting enough, uh, the kids that I've played with um, don't take the same strategy as their parents. Um, I think some of the adults that I've played with um, tend to follow that splendor mechanic of making sure you start at the bottom and working your way up towards the top, towards the more expensive um, items on the board. And I think uh, some kids realize they didn't have to do that and totally bypass that uh, strategy. And they moved on and picked uh, and bought some of the higher level items right away, uh, giving them um, a lot of resources the whole game, which I thought was very interesting that uh, kids were able to break out of the box and think of a new way to play. Um, the Components are great. Uh, the dispenser wasn't too difficult to put together, and since there's a lot of angles uh, involved in how the thing fits together, uh, I don't think it's something that's gonna fall apart easily um, or even as much as some people have had with potion explosion getting moved around a lot. Um, the one thing I liked that they did with the components is instead of using the glass marbles like they did for potion explosion, they went ahead and went with acrylic and I had a couple people complain about it at first, but after real thinking about it, um, I think it was a wise choice on Simon's part to um, uh, use the acrylic instead of glass. They're much less likely to break during shipping, and it's also going to be a, a lot lighter of a box, and so uh, the shipping is going to be less, which is a plus for any of you consumers who are looking to purchase this one. If this sounds like something that you're interested in, check it out on the Simon website, and don't forget to subscribe to all the other great content and videos from Tatum.